This has got to be one of the most requested teams to rebuild I've ever had on this series. Celtic are the second most successful team in Scotland. They've been crowned champions of Scotland a total of 51 times and won the domestic cup on 39 separate occasions. However, last year Rangers absolutely demolished everybody in the Scottish League and took the title with ease. And that's where we come in. By the end of today's video, we're going to make Celtic the best team in the world and make them European champions. If this is a team you want me to rebuild, let me know in the comments down below. I will get around to it at some point, I promise. And as always, if you go on to enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, smash that subscribe button. We're aiming for 2,000 subscribers before October. Can we get 50 likes on this video? That's the target. And if you haven't seen one of my rebuild videos before, here are the rules. The main objective of this video is to win the Champions League. I can make any transfers that I want whilst keeping it as realistic as possible. All games have to be simulated, but the Champions League final has to be played. We are starting the first season off with Celtic with £13.16 million. I do believe Celtic have the highest budget in the entire Scottish Premiership. This is the starting eleven that we're currently rocking with right now. Do bear in mind, I'm recording this midway through the transfer season, so if there's any players that shouldn't be here or should be here, I do apologise. There's a couple of decent players. We've got Turnbull, who's 20 years old. We've got Edward, who's 22 years of age. He's decent, to be fair, as well. No doubt someone will pick him up so we shouldn't be in this rebuild either. Scott Brown's definitely going to have to get replaced. I know he's the captain. I know he's an absolute Celtic legend but he's 35 years of age so in the next season or so he's definitely going to be retiring so we are going to be looking for players to replace him. We may have to look into buying a new keeper as well. 73 rated. If we make it into the Champions League we're not going to stand a chance. We've just found our keeper guys Diogo Costa. We bought him from Porto for £4.2 million. 20 years of age. 72 rated. I'm confident that he'll be very good for us. We have just secured Aston Frank for just over £2.7 million, pounds, 17 years of age, 67 rated. I want Aston Frank to be one of the future players of Celtic. And we aren't quite finished yet. Leonardo Sturgeo, he cost us £2.55 million. Pounds. He's 18 years old, 67 rated. He's got a lot of time to improve. And that does conclude season 1's first transfer window. This is how the team is looking. I'm really happy with the players that we have brought in. I feel like in the long term, they're going to be very, very good players for us. They're all young. They've all got potential as well. I have put a position change on Frank, so hopefully by the halfway point of this season he will be a CDM. I do want us to be winning the Scottish Premier League though this season. If I don't win it I'll be quite disappointed with the team we've got. But nevertheless guys we haven't got any European football at all this year so let's go to the halfway point and see how we're getting on. Oh boy we got a lot of work to do. We're literally 10 points behind Rangers in the league. Rangers have yet to lose a single game either. I think the Rangers have got this in the bag this season. I can't see them throwing a 10 point lead away just like that in the second half of this season. But there is more than one season to do after all. We aren't even in Europe yet so we've got a lot of time to catch up with Rangers. And that does conclude season one, second transfer window. This is how the team is looking at the minutes. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm actually really happy with how the team's progressing. I must admit though, I'm very disappointed in Aston Frank. He hasn't even improved yet. I've changed his position, so it can't be that. I don't know what's up with him. I hope he improves by the end of this season though. Personally though, I think season one is building the foundations of the future for Celtic. I mean, we've got the youth in. Everybody apart from Frank seems to be improving. So hopefully the second part of the season, we can do bits, close the gap with Rangers a little bit at least. Hopefully we could pit them to the post and win the Scottish Premiership. Who knows? But nevertheless, guys, let's go to the end of the season and see how we've done. Unfortunately, guys, we weren't able to close the gap between ourselves and Rangers. If anything, Rangers took an even bigger lead by 11 points. Now, this bit completely threw me off the first stage and the second stage of the Premiership. So, to give a brief overview for those that don't know, they separate the top six and bottom six into their own separate groups. The top six fight for European spots. The bottom six fight for survival in the Premiership. But yeah, we do unfortunately finish second. But second place, we've got a lot of room for improvement in the coming seasons. I don't know whether we've got Europe or not. We're going to have to wait until season two to find that out. I'm really unfamiliar with Scottish football, so I do apologise. We did, however, win the Scottish Cup, beating Rangers in the process 2-1 in the final. The boys did absolutely bit stats-wise. Elianessi, I've completely butchered that name, but whatever, we moved. He scored 24 goals, assisting five in the process. Edward got 24 goals and nine in the process, gained himself to 80 rated in one season. He went up five this season. That's incredible. James Forrest scored 16, bagged himself four and assists as well. Christie got himself 10 goals, 1 assist. McGregor from the CDM role got himself 9 goals, 4 assists. We've done really well to be honest guys. For the first season it's a really good and positive start. The players that I brought in will continue to grow. They are young. They've got a lot of time to improve. So bright things are ahead for Celtic. With that being said, let's go to season 2. 
got a little bit more money in season two with the board allocating us just over 25 million pounds. Now, Kenny Agnolesi's loan has expired, so they have gone back to their respective teams. So I do want to bring in another right back, and I would like to bring in a winger, if I'm being honest. The rest of the team, however, I'm actually quite happy with. I'm really happy with the progress. Varank has gone up to 69 rated, which is good news. He's still got a hell of a lot of time to improve. He's in the CDM role as well, so hopefully this is the year he racks up some numbers and he improves a bit more. We made our first sale of the video, and James Forrest has gone to tie Progress for £14.7 million. We have just got an absolute bargain in Harvey Elliott, the 18 year old Englishman, cost us £13 million to rob away from Liverpool. He's already 75 rated. We got him on a five year deal as well. I can't wait to see how good he becomes for us. We have also just signed Necker Williams from Liverpool as well. He cost us £5 million. He's 20 years of age, 71 rated. We needed a replacement for Kenny, and I think we found a quite suitable one. We have sold Christopher Julian to Newcastle United for £6.5 million. We've also sold Stephen Marsh to Hanover 96 for 1.55 million pounds and that does conclude season two's first transfer winner this is how the team is looking right now i have changed the formation to accommodate Elliot and neko williams we're going to change rank back to a sentiment i feel sorry for that guy i bet he feels like he's being played a mug at the minute but i am quite confident with this team that we could do quite well in the premier league once again and maybe even tip rangers to the post this season now don't ask me how but we're automatically into the europa league i swear there were some playoff games but nevertheless we're up against lazio the Sakasia, and fc luzerne Lazio are definitely going to go through to the round of 32. I don't know who's going to join them. We're going to have to wait and see. Let's go to the halfway point and see if we're joining them. Oh man, we've absolutely crashed out of the group stage for the first time in this series. We didn't even win a single game, guys. We played six, won none, drew one and lost five. Yeah, we ain't ready for Europe yet. At least this season, we're within touching distance of Rangers. We're only four points behind them. At this point last season, I think we're about 10 points behind them. So we are improving, at least in the Scottish Premier League. We managed to sign Roman Sires for the region of £10 million as well. 31 years of age, 79 rated, 6 foot 2. He might be the experienced player that we need to take us to the next level. We sold two players. First one, Greg Taylor has gone to Osasuna for £4.4 million. And Ismail Solo has gone to Fenerbahce for £6.8 million as well. We've had to sell Diogo Costa. He wasn't happy with his wages. And when we tried to give him more, he wouldn't accept it. So we've sold him for FC Michelin for £10.4 million. We brought in another left back in, Matt Target. He cost us £24.7 million. 26 years of age, 79 rated. We all know how good he is from the Aston Villa rebuild, so we brought him into this team. So at the end of the second transfer window of season two, this is how the team is looking. I'm not going to lie to you guys, Rank's doing my head in at the minute. So I'm pretty sure next season he's going to get sold or he's going to get replaced one way or the other. I'm not having him in the starting 11 next season. The team's starting to slowly come together. Harvey Elliott's done absolutely incredibly this year. He's gone up four already. Necker Williams has gone up three as well, I do believe. He brought Barkas in, the original keeper, who's turned out to be an absolute gem as well. I can't believe I didn't realise this earlier. He's gone up to 78 rated. It's going to be a big second half of the season for us guys. I think we've got the quality to win the league though this year, but we don't know that. Let's go to the end of the season and see if we did it. We did unfortunately come second once again, but we have closed the gap a little bit. Next season, I'm not waiting around any longer. If we've got the money to bring in real quality, I'm not going to wait around and beat about the bush anymore. I'm going to buy them. Let's finish in second place as well. We do need to bring in some really good players because we got our backsides kicked in Europe. We did win the Scottish up once again though beating Hamilton 2-0 in the final. Ed Ward is absolutely killing it in the Scottish League. 28 goals, 13 assists and he's gone up to 84 rated at only 24 years of age. He's going to be an absolute pivotal part of our future success. Ryan Christie bagged himself 21 goals and 8 assists going up to 78 rated as well. Harv Yelich had an incredible first season scoring 13 goals, 4 assists, age 19 and he's already gone up to 80 rated as well. To be fair guys, we've had a good season we're very disappointed with how we finished in Europe. I do not want that feeling again I hated the fact that we went out in the group stage that's the first time in this series that we've gone out in the group stage of Europe I don't want to repeat that again but nevertheless guys season three I'm going to make a lot of changes to the team hopefully the choices I'm making in season three do benefit us so without further ado let's go to season three we do start season three with a transfer budget of just under 68 million pounds. Now this is the team. This is how it's looking. I want another central attacking midfielder. Turnbull is out of the team at the minute and he's requested a move away. So we're going to use the money we get for Turnbull and buy a new central attacking midfielder with it. I also would like another central midfielder. Other than that, guys, I'm actually quite happy with how the team looks. And we have ended up selling Turnbull to Fenerbahce for 32.1 million pounds. We've just made our first purchase in Luka Avenue. Set the Croatian cost us 25.1 million pounds 
pound to rob away from Watford. 23 years old and 78 rated. He's 5'9". He's absolutely rapid. I've got a feeling he's going to be insane for us. And we brought in Douglas Louise from Aston Villa for £26 million. 24 years of age. 80 rated already as well. He's going to slot in perfectly next to McGregor. We've just sent Frank out on loan to Union Berlin. Hopefully when he comes back he'll be a little bit better. And that does wrap up Season 3's first transfer window. It was a very busy transfer window indeed. Our front three however looks absolutely brilliant going into this. I'm actually really confident in going into season three i think this is the season where we can potentially win the scottish premiership and also hopefully we can make it out to the group stage of the europa league this year as well to be honest there's not really many places i would like to improve maybe bring a bit of squad depth in but other than that i'm really happy with how the team looks we are in group e of the europa league we are joined by sc braga galatasaray and basil now this has to be the most evenly matched group i have ever witnessed in fifa anybody can go through to the round of 32 i hope we're one of them i really don't want to crash out of the group stage again that would be quite embarrassing if I'm being honest. With that being said, let's skip to halfway through the season and see if we made out a groupie. We actually did get a win this time in the group stage. We've made it through to the round of 32 along with Galatasaray. But who is our first opponent in the round of 32? Oh man, we're up against Sevilla. That is going to be a tough one, guys. I'm not even going to front with you. I think we're going out in the round of 32. Sevilla have got a next level team. We have officially asserted our dominance in the Scottish Premier League. We are leading the pack by seven points, guys. That is a tremendous bit of progress from last season to this season. We have sold Tom Rogers to Norwich for £3.85 million. We signed Tyree Sterling, the youngster from Blackburn, for £17 million. This guy is 5'5 five five and he's absolutely rapid. He's going to be impossible to get off the ball. He's 21 years of age and he's 76 rated as well. He's got so much time to improve. Now I know that I said it by quality there and now and he is young but I do believe he will grow quite quickly. At the end of the second transfer window in season 3, this is how the team is stacking up. It is miles better than it was when we first started this he massively improved and it's only taken us three seasons to get it to this point as well i'm massively impressed with how we've done dolan slotted in very nicely on that left hand side of the pitch i'm very confident by the end of this season that front three is going to be so dead it's going to be unreal but guys we do have our first knockout game in the europa league against Sevilla, so let's go straight to it Sevilla's team is absolutely no joke guys take a look at their team they've got declan rice they've got rakitic they've got Belotti, they've got a campus man the last rakik as well we're going to have our work cut out if we want to get into the round of 16 guys honestly we are at home though so maybe the home advantage will do us justice but the question is can we get an advantage going into the second leg we get a one all draw severe getting that away goal which we know is very important in these knockout stages it's all to play for though in the second leg still i do think we've got the quality to go through to be honest guys i mean if you look at our team it's very well rounded there's a couple of players that do stand out from the pack though like edward and Elliot. but overall guys we're defensively solid our midfield solid and our front three is really really good as well so we do stand a decent chance we are away from home as well we've got a good record away from home in every single rebuild video that we do so hopefully it can continue and we can book our place in the round of 32 oh my god we've done it we've actually done it guys oh my god the away goals take us through to the next round of the europa league we knock out Sevilla. our round of 16 opponents our french team lil their team is pretty decent to be honest they've got mbolo way andre mason holgate magnan castagne lil are a good team don't get me wrong but i think we've just knocked out a better team in order to get to this point we are at home as well so can we use the home advantage to give us an advantage going into the second leg we get another draw in the knockout stage we do love a draw don't we again we are down in a way goal so that could make all the difference going into the second leg it's all to play for guys in the second leg we've got an away goal against us but it's our turn to be away from home and it's our turn to potentially use the away goals as an advantage to get our place in the quarterfinals with that being said can we book the Scottish Giants? Oh, no, we can't. We go out in the round of 16. That's really unfortunate. We do make it far further than we did in Season 2, though, so that is at least progress. But in fairness, guys, we could book our place in the Champions League final if we do finish top off the Scottish Premier League. So with that being said, let's go to the end of the season and see how we've gone on. Guys, we finished nine points clear of second place Rangers. We have finally asserted our dominance in the Scottish Premier League. It did take us three seasons, but better late than never. We did, however, lose to Rangers in the Scottish Cup final 2-1. Liverpool ended up beating Olympic Lyon 3-2 in the Europa League final as well. We had absolutely no chance of winning the Europa League if Liverpool were in it. And Manchester City beat PSG 2-1 in the Champions League final. 
Edward has been an absolute gun since the start of this rebuild. He has gone up to 87 rated this season, bagging himself 30 goals and assisting 12 in the process. Harvey Elliott is an absolute machine on this game. He's 20 years of age, 85 rated. We're going to be hard pressed to keep this guy. He scored 24 goals, assisted 6. What an absolute baller. Aaron Tex had a pretty decent debut season as well. He scored 15 goals, assisted 8 and he went up to 80 rated as well. Considering he started that halfway through the season, he's done all right I suppose. He's managed to get 8 goals no assists and he got up to 77 rated the gamble may not have paid off in the end i might be being a bit harsh but he's only gone up to 77 rated and he's only scored eight goals for us this season brian christie however has done pretty well he's gone up to 79 rated scoring 11 goals and five assists to be honest guys i'm really happy with how the team's done this season it's a massive step up from season two hopefully in the next couple of seasons we can start a suit now with dominance in europe as well so having said that guys let's go to season four for some reason, even though we did better last season than we did before, we've been given a lower budget than last season, we've been given just under £48 million to spend. Now Dolan, for some reason, has just decided to jump up two cents the last season, so I'm going to keep hold of him till the end of this season, hopefully he can continue to improve. But other than that, I would like another central midfielder and maybe another centre-back if we can afford one decent enough to join the team. And we have found our man, the German central midfielder Switch Sadar, came from West Ham for just under £42 million. He's 26, he's 82 rated deal slot perfectly next to Douglas Louise. And now we do finally have our playoff games. I don't know what it was. It might have been a glitch in career mode. We never had this with Europa League, but we do have it with the Champions League. We're up against FCSB. I don't know who they are. I'm not going to lie to you. Hopefully we can get the win away from home against them. We should do realistically. Our team is really good. We've got the 3-2 win away from him. It was a lot harder than it should have been. But nevertheless, we do get the win onto the next game. Having set picked up suspension, so Ajeti has taken his place in that central attacker midfielder. I'm not going to beat about out the bus with 3-2 up on aggregate with three away goals hopefully we can do enough in this game to book our place yes we do we get the one all draw we go through on aggregate our next opponents are fc michelin i'm pretty sure i've butchered that name but nevertheless we are away from home in this game i don't know a single player on their team so i'm not even going to try and tell you how good or bad they are but i think these guys were in our first europa league group and they absolutely wiped the floor with us so i don't know but we have massively improved since then we're away from home we're going to skip this game hopefully we can do enough yes we get a comfortable 3-0 win but one game away from booking our place in the group stage of the champions league with 3-0 up we've got three away goals we're pretty much there let's skip this game and see if we can finally get our place in the champions league we do i don't know why when we're away we play far better than we do when we're at home but nevertheless we're into the champions league group stage it's only took us four seasons but we're finally there and that does draw a conclusion to the first transfer window in season four this is how the team is looking edward is absolutely killing you up top he's going to be so important him and Elliot as well to be fair are going to be so important to our success this season our midfield is solid I brought back Sturgio because size is dropping and to be honest Sturgio is only 21 years of age I might have been a bit harsh on him initially but we are in the Champions League this season finally so let's go to our group stage and see where our competition is oh man we are in the group of death aren't we? we're up against Bayern Munich Ajax and RB Salzburg okay it's going to be between ourselves and Ajax who goes through with Bayern Munich Bayern Munich are going to wipe the floor with everybody in this group. I really don't want to crash out in the group stage again, guys. We've worked so hard to get here, and to crash out would be heartbreaking. But nevertheless, guys, let's go to the halfway stage in this season and see if we made it out of the group of death. We have made it out of the group of death, guys. Ajax really didn't turn up in this group stage. They only won one and drew two. By Munich and ourselves did get out of the group stage quite comfortably, both of us getting over 10 points in the process. So here we go, guys. The big question, who's our next opponent in the round of 16? Yep, our journey is going to come to an end in the round of 16 guys we're up against Barcelona for God's sake. We couldn't have drawn Benfica. We couldn't have drawn Napoli. No, we had to draw one of the best. But the stranger things have happened on this rebuild series. You never know what we could pull off. Damn, okay. This truly is a two-horse race in the Scottish Premier League. These one point in it between ourselves and Rangers. We are top of the league, though. But between ourselves and Rangers, we've only lost one this season. That is absolutely insane. It's whoever can maintain consistent throughout the rest of the season will win the Scottish Premier League. We've been very inactive in the second transfer window in season four we made no purchases or sales we're kind of broke from buying suit or from being totally honest with you guys and nobody came up with an offer that's enticing enough to accept but this is how the team looks going into the second half of this season and i'm not gonna lie the fact that edward and harvey elliott are both that high rated is absolutely insane it does fill me with hope against barcelona to be honest i mean you never know we do have really good quality in our team now dolan is getting there as 
well. He's now 80 rated. Hopefully, he can continue to improve as the seasons go by. Sturgio may need to get replaced. He's not growing quick enough at all to maintain with the quality of the team. I think next season, we may have to look into another centre-back, another keeper, because 81 rated in the Champions League just isn't good enough. And maybe if Avancet doesn't improve as much as I want him to, he may be getting sold and replaced as well. But I digress, guys. We are in the round of 16 in the Champions League. We're up against Spanish giant Barcelona. Let's go to that fixture. It's a moment of truth, really, guys, if you think about it. Can we hold our own against the big boys in Europe? And what better way to test our team against one of the best teams in Europe? I mean, look at their team, man. There's not one player on that team that's bad. I know I said before we got to this fixture that Edouard and Harvey Elliott do fill me with confidence, but looking at that team, that confidence has shrunk straight back down. But nevertheless, we are at home, so home advantage hopefully will give us a little bit more of a chance, but we're going to quick sim this, and hopefully we can hold our own a little. Oh, wow, we get absolutely annihilated. We get absolutely annihilated 3-0. Calvert-Lewin with the brace and Koke finishes the job off. We're pretty much out at this point, but who knows what could happen in the second leg. We have got an absolute Everest and then some to climb if we've got any chance of getting into the quarterfinals, guys. Barcelona have ripped us apart, realistically speaking. But there is always a chance, I suppose. We are incredibly good away from home in the Champions League. We have proven that time and time again, so we're going to quick sim this. Can we do anything against... But No, we can't. We can't. We absolutely get annihilated. 5-1. It finishes on aggregate. It was nice whilst it lasted. We did draw one of the big guys in the early stages of the Champions League. Maybe if we'd have drawn one of the weaker teams, we'd have done a little bit better. But who knows? That's a part of him at this point now. We haven't got Europe anymore. So let's go to the end of the season and see how we got on. We at least finished the season off strong, winning the Scottish Premier League for the second season running. We beat Rangers to the post yet again by four points. It's great to see that we still got dominance in Scotland. However, However, Rangers do beat Aberdeen 4-3 on penalties in the final of the Scottish Cup. Inter Milan won the Europa League, beating Sevilla 5-4 on penalties in the final. And Barcelona did end up beating Manchester City 1-0 in the Champions League final. At least we got knocked out by the champions. That's something to take home, I suppose. Harvey Elliott, man, what a talent. He's gone up to 89 rated at only 21 years of age. If we keep hold of him, we could do pretty well in the next couple of seasons. He scored 28 goals, assisted 12 as well this season. Edward, he went up to 90 rated this season at only 26 years of age, scoring 23 goals and 12 assists. Avenue set went up to 81 rated, scoring 14 goals, assisting 1 this season. To Itsudo scored 13 goals, assisting 6. McGregor scored 7, assisting 10. Azure scored 6, assisting 9 from the centre-back position. Let that sink in. Dolan's catching up slowly but surely as well. He's going up to 81 rated as well, scoring 6 goals, assisting 4. We've done really well this season, guys. Hopefully, we can just keep progressing as the seasons go on. Next season, I want to get at least to the semi-final of the Champions League. So with that being said, let's go to season 5. In season 5, we've got just under £64 million to work with. And honestly, guys, there's only one place I need to spend that money, and that's the centre-back position. I've got all the faith in the world in Dolan and Ivan Set continuing to improve because they have done already. If we could get another centre-back with this team, we've got a genuine shot at doing well in the Champions League this year. I have always loved Fakayo Tamori, and I'm so happy we've got him at Salty. He costs us £47.2 million to rob away from Wolverhampton Wanderers. 26 years of age, 83 rated. He's absolutely rapid in his 6 foot one as well. Well, we've just signed Lorenzo Insigne on a free. He was a free agent, so we picked him up. He's cost us 79 grand a week. He's 33 years of age, 84 rated as well. He's going to be a superb super sub. We've just also signed Daniel Pereo on a free. He's cost us 46 grand a week. I know he's 35, but he's 82 rated still, and he could prove to be quite useful if someone gets injured in the midfield. And we've also just managed to pick up Pablo Sarabia on a free as well. He's cost us 60 grand a week. He's 32, he's 80 rated. He's going to be a decent super sub if one of our wingers get injured as well. It's that time again guys it's the playoffs to determine if we can get into the group stage of the champions league we're up against legio wars are we? i've never heard of them before in my life maybe they could be a future rebuild in fifa 22 but nevertheless guys i'm very very confident we're gonna win this we're away from home hopefully we can yeah, we do win 3-1. Edward and Arvin set gain us the goals that we needed. We sold Bio to Santos Laguna for £2.3 million. We've also sold Henderson to SK Rapid VN for £1.4 million as well. We've got a 3-1 advantage over these guys. We should absolutely sail into the next playoff game. Hopefully, yes, we do. Why do we always draw a home and win away? It just doesn't make any sense. We have sold Aston Vrank to RCD Espanol for £4.5 million. It was a gamble and it just didn't pay off in the end. We have also sold Anthony Ralston to S 
FC Basel for £1.35 million. Pounds. Our last playoff game is against Rosenberg BK, the first leg of two legs, and we are away for the first leg as well. Hopefully, we can put our away form to good use and gain the fans going into the second game. We lose 1 0. What is going on here? How are we losing 1 0 to the team that we've got? That's actually mad. Oh my god. Okay, we go into the second leg, down one goal. Could our Champions League run end before it's even begun? I mean, at the minute, we are going out with 1 0 down on aggregate. We're determined this game. Hopefully, we can pull this one out of the bag and get gain entry into the Champions League group stage. Let's see if we can do it. Can we do it? Can we pick our place in the Champions League? Thank the Lord for that. We made it difficult for ourselves, but we got there in the end. We go through on aggregate 3-2. We're in the Champions League group stage. We just sold Fed to range for £2.8 million. And that does conclude an extremely busy transfer window. That was absolutely mental. We successfully gained our spot in the Champions League group stage. At least that's a good thing. And our team is looking absolutely brilliant. I really want Dolan to improve guys honestly the fact that he's 10 ratings below Edward and Elliot is a little bit worrying I'm not gonna lie to you but nevertheless I'm very confident with our chances of actually winning it this time I mean look at the team it's in Champions League winning team but having said that guys let's go to the group stage and see who our first competition is this one's quite a tricky group stage so we're against Real Sociedad Manchester United and CSKA Moscow now United with the quality they've got in the team should be going through quite easily I'm going to put money on ourselves going through as well but with Real Sociedad and CSKA Moscow's team you never know what kind of quality they're stacking so you never know who could actually go through with United with that being said let's go to the halfway point of the season and see who is going through to the round of 16 we have made it through to the round of 16 along with Manchester United we beat Real Sociedad to the post we were quite comfortable in the end to be honest in this group stage but nevertheless guys the question is who is our next opponent please don't be Barcelona okay okay I will take that we're up against Sporting CP that is far better than Barcelona we maintain our state to sit the top of the Scottish Premier League by three points. Ranger are in close pursuit of us though. Again, it's a two-horse race. Season 5 second transfer window has wrapped up without us making any transfers or sales. Quite frankly, I don't want to buy anybody into this team. I've changed my mind. I like Dolan. I like Arvin Sek. I like Barkas. I genuinely think this is the team that can win the Champions League this year. Edwards 92. Elliot's 93. Adjir's 89 rated. Target's 86. Williams is 87. We've genuinely got the quality to do it. But first, we have to get past Sporting. This is the exact stage of the competition where we got knocked out last year, so anything after the round of 16 for us is progress. We are up against Sporting CP. Hopefully, we can do the number on them. I fully believe that our team is far superior to theirs. We are at home in the first leg, so hopefully we can get the home advantage, put it to good use, and hopefully get... Oh my god, we lose 1-0. What is going on? How are we losing to Sporting CP? Our team is ridiculous. I'm honestly getting deja vu here. This is the exact point in where we went out last season. Hopefully, history doesn't repeat itself and we don't get knocked out in the round of 16. Hopefully, we can pull it back in the second leg. Honestly, if we go out in the round of 16 again, guys, I'm going to be so disappointed, man. Our team is so good. We should be performing so much better than this. If we can't beat Sporting CP, though, guys, how are we going to get on against the likes of Manchester United, the Liverpools, the Man Cities, the Bayern Munichs? We're away from home. We're 1-0 down in aggregate. Hopefully, we can pull this one out of the bag and get our play into the car oh, thank you thank you you, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not even religious, but I thank you anyways. We pull it out of the bag, we win 3-2 in the end, we're through to the quarterfinals, thank the Lord. Jesus Christ, we're up against Liverpool in the quarters, man. Oh my God, look at their team as well. They've got Dybala, Salah, Jota, Odegaard, Fabinho, Puig, Virgil van Dijk, he's coming back to haunt his old team. Kieran Tidi, Sensei, Alexander-Arnold and Alisson. That is a very, very good team. We have got Harvey Elliott, who's just it now. 94 rated as well, coming back to haunt his old team. We're at home. Hopefully, we can have a better performance at home than we did against Sporting CP. I am praying that we can do something against Liverpool. Maybe a draw. Oh my God. Okay, we get a win. We win at home against Liverpool. That is massive. We're so much better away from home as well, guys. So this bodes well for us massively going into the second leg. My biggest question, guys, is can we hold off Liverpool? They are European giants. They are the elite of the elite when it comes to Europe. And if we can somehow not Liverpool, like we've got a genuine shot at winning the Champions League this year. That is enough for me waffling though, guys. We already know the score. Can we 
Fukawa plays in the semi-final. Oh my god, we've actually done it. We've actually knocked out Liverpool in the quarterfinals, guys. We are through to the semi-finals in season five. From one English giant to the next, we're up against Manchester City in the semi-finals. We're away from home in the first leg. Their team, you know the drill. Their team is absolutely crazy. But we are away from home, guys. And to be honest, I've got a lot of faith in the boys that we can pull this out the back. Even if we lose, if we score, it's still a good thing. So with that being said, guys, can we pull pull off pretty much the impossible beat Manchester City in the first leg oh okay we get a draw we do draw it's not good it's not bad it's even Steven going into the second leg but that does however mean guys we can't really afford to concede at all in the second leg otherwise it's game over it is literally anybody's game going into this second leg tie against Man City I'm hoping that a couple of the individuals from my team the likes of Edward the likes of Harvey Elliott can put in a masterclass performance because realistically speaking that is the difference between us going out and us going through to the Champions League final but with that being said guys it's not down to me it's up to the boys so can the boys secure our spot in the champions league oh my god we've actually done it. we've actually done it edward has actually done it for us he secures our spot in the champions league in the 34th minute with a goal the only goal of the game the only goal of the entire tie we could be bringing the champions league to scotland but the question is who is our final opponent this is just as poetic as it gets. We're up against Barcelona, the team that actually knocked us out last season in the round of 16. If we could beat them, that would be the ultimate revenge. Man, what a game this is going to be. Celtic versus Barcelona. But before we get into the final, let's go see how we've done elsewhere this season. We absolutely ran away with the Scottish Premier League. In the end, we batted Rangers. We batted absolutely everybody. We had just under a 20-point lead in the end. It's incredible to see, guys. We've asserted our dominance over the Scotland in the past three seasons. St. Johnstone beat Aberdeen 2-1 in the Scottish Cup final as well. It makes a change for me that also Rangers winning it to be fair. Leicester City went on to beat Real Madrid 2-0 in the Europa League final. Go on then Leicester. Oh my god. Take a look at Edward stats. 42 goals and 7 assists in 56 games. That is absolutely incredible and he's gone up to 92 rated this season as well. Jesus Christ. Paul the Elliott bagged himself 30 goals and 6 16 assists this season in 61 games, going up to 94 rated as well. What an absolute bargain this guy was. I don't even think we paid above 40 million for Harvey Elliott. Avenue set got himself 12 goals and 5 assists in 54 games, gained himself to 83 rated overall as well. To be honest, guys, those three really did carry us this season. Well, mainly Edward and Harvey Elliott, but that is what you'd expect if you're that good. It's been an absolutely incredible fifth season. The only way we can top it off is by beating Barcelona in the final. For some reason, they're playing Pogba on the ring, but that's up to them. They've got Martinez, Calvert Lewin, Cruz de Young, Koke, Dembele, to Stegen. But they are playing three at the back though. We can penetrate that back three if we utilize Harvey Ellis and Dolan enough. But I think I've said all I needed to say. We're at the San Siro. It's Barcelona versus Celtic. It's Spain versus Scotland. Let's get into it. I can't believe it's taken me till now to address this, but the reason that I've chosen to do Celtic before Rangers is because, quite frankly, Rangers are doing far better in real life than Celtic are at the minute. Matt Targi, can we find Dolan on the wing? Oh my god, yes we do. Dolan, oh my god, he is, he is tiny, isn't he? Oh no. God, no, 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 no. Calvert Lewin's just torn us apart here. Calvert Lewin's just torn us apart. Can we get the Barkas? What a legend! We've got Williams on the ball. We've got Reco Williams. Can we whip one in? Can we whip one in? Can we whip one in? No. Edward, can we get in on it? No. Ah, oh, come on. Alex on the ball on the right hand side of the pitch. Can we find Sadar? Sadar is going to take a shot. Oh, what a shot that was. Oh, that's so lucky. That is so lucky. That couldn't have been far away. That looked like it was only inches over. Oh my god, it was as well. What a goal that would have been. Matt Target's on the ball. Matt Target. Matt Target. Matt Target. Is anybody giving him an option? No. Dolan, can we find a run? Oh my god, yes we can. Can we get there? Oh my god, Dolan's through. Dolan is through. We're going to chip this into... Uh, no, why did we do that? 
I'm such a doofus sometimes. Williams against Pogba. Williams does win the race. Oh my god. Uh, race? Uh, what am I talking about? A tackle, tackle. He won the tackle. But nevertheless, oh my god, Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott. Oh no, no, no. I'm an idiot. Uh, why do I keep messing up the final third? Avanusuk's got the ball. Avanusuk's got the ball. Can we find Harvey Elliott? I am not messing this up. I am not messing this up. We're gonna we're gonna go finesse. Come on! We're one nil up against Barcelona, just shy of the 40th minute, courtesy of Harvey Elliott. Who else would it be, guys? Let's be honest. We've wasted so many chances, guys. We've been all over Barca. We finally, finally make it account in the final third. Harvey Elliott on his left foot. He finds the finesse. Bottom left bends. To Stegen doesn't stand a chance. We make it one nil to Celtic. Come on, doing it for the Scots. So it's Sadar, so it's Sadar. Oh, what, what? Oh, right, 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 right. Edward was literally there. Why is this ball still being played? It's two minutes into extra time. Blow the down whistle, ref. Ref, oi, you're rigged. Barcelona have paid you off. Why is this whistle not going? Thank you. Oh, my God. I was getting shades of Chelsea Barcelona all over again then. Thankfully, we're going to half time 1 0 up still. We should be like 4 or 5 0 up though. We just can't finish it for some reason in the final third. It's either the touch, the shot choice, or whatever. Barcelona haven't had a single shot yet. That just shows how much they've been in our final third. They really haven't been in the final third. If we maintain our quality on the pitch right now, we have got this game in the bag. Dolan's got the ball on the left hand side of the pitch. What can you do with it? What can you do with it? What can to do with it. He's too. He's so agile. He's so small. We get back to target. Douglas Louise. Can we find Edward? Edward. Oh, bloody hell! Usman Dembele is on the ball on the right hand side of the pitch. Tomori is in chase, but oh my god, do Dembele is just taking him clean out. But we get an absolutely crunching tackle. I think that was Douglas Louise, and we are on the ball. Can we find Arvin Nesek? I don't know what his name is. I've got. Oh, He's, whatever his name is, he's not weak. He's not bloody strong enough. I think Barcelona realise that they've got to put the pressure on if they've got to get anything out of this game. I'm not going to hand it to him on a silver platter. We've got the ball with Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott, the best player in this team. The talisman of Celtic at the minute. Can he find anyone? Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Is that offside? I don't, I don't even care if that was offside. How did he miss that? Oh, no, guys. Guys, we've been torn completely apart. Trinchao is on the ball. Trinchao is on the ball. Oh, my God. Adieu. 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 Can we get the ball to Harvey Elliott? Yes, we can. He's onside. Can he, can, what can he do? Can he tear up a McCarney apart? No, he can't. Oh, oh, hang on. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Can he find Edward? Edward on his right foot. No. Oh, no, guys. Ansu Fati's on the ball. Williams is in chase. He's blocked the bloody cross in. Can, he can't get the header in, though. Koke is on the ball. I am absolutely bricking it. What is going on? What? Oh, oh my God. What a tackle from Tamori. Did you guys see that? If it isn't for Tamori there, we, we're one all. Oh my God. We have just been saved there. Well, literally, I've got every man back apart from the attacking midfielder and the striker. And they are still... I can't get the ball off him. I literally can't get the ball off him. Thank you. Oh my God. Azir has literally saved our bacon so much in this game. We've got the ball now. We've got the ball. Can we find... Can we find... Our, oh, my God. What a ball to Williams. I didn't even aim for that to go to him. But can we find anyone in the box? Oh, my God. That is so unlucky. But I think that is game over anyway. Can we knock this ball out? Is it game over? It is. Celtic are Champions League winners for the first time. I do believe in their history. I do apologise if I'm wrong. But I think that's the first time that they've ever won it. And we've beaten Barcelona to do it. The ones who knocked us out in the round of 16 last season. We got our ultimate revenge. I'm so happy we've just been able to pull that one out of the bag. That was so tense at the end. That was squeaky bum time. If you guys have got any teams that you want me to do, tell me down below. I'm trying to get to as many teams as possible. Just be patient with me, I promise. I'll get to them. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, smash that subscribe button. We're aiming for 2,000 subscribers before October. I think we can do it. It's a lot to ask, but I think we can do it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.